How? Today we discuss some commonly asked interview questions in the companies. So, for this just go through the quick overview of the data structure. So, in data structure the data is simply a set of values which represent the same fact and figure. Initially we have raw data to use this properly we have to process this data in meaningful way. When data is processed in meaningful way that is known as information. When the data item has a single value it is known as the data item. When the data can be further divided into sub items actually data items are of two types first is the elementary data item and second is the group item. In elementary data item the data item is not further divided like roll number like faculty id. In group item the data items are further divided like name first name, middle name, last name like address, street, flat number, location, pin number. So, these are the group data item. A file is the collection of records that can be treated as a unit. An entity is an independent object about which data is being collected. It is generalized class of pupil, place or objects for which the data is collected. Next is entity set is a collection of the similar entities like students is an entity in the college. A key that is the primary key is a field or a set of field in a record that is used to identify uh, the record. It is a unique in a file that is like roll number. Through roll number we can find the record of the student. Next the process data this as we discussed that process data is known as information from raw data we extract the data according to our requirement. This data is meaningful and it is known as information and information helps in decision making. So, there are some basic terminologies that are associated with the data structure. So, what is the data? The first question is what is data? The data structure is a logical or mathematical model of organizing data is called the data structure. The data structure is divided into two parts primitive data structure and non primitive data structure. The primitive data structures are directly operated by the machine instructions. They are the basic data structures like integer, corrector, float. Primitive, non-primitive data structures are the sophisticated data structures that are derived from the primitive data structures. They emphasize on the, the collection of the homogeneous and heterogeneous data items. And non-primitive data structure is further divided into linear data structure and non-linear data structure. In linear data structure, the data item is arranged in sequential manner like array, linked list, stack, queue. In non-linear data structure, the one data item is connected to several other data items. They are not arranged in the sequential manner. So, the linear data item, the data items are arranged in a linear sequence. So, the process of element is possible in a linear manner like array, stack, queue, linked list. A data structure whose elements do not form a sequence. So, there is a unique successor or predecessor is called a non-linear data structure like tree, graph. 
in homogeneous data structures all the elements are of same data types that means all are of integer ya fir all are of float ya fir all are of character but in non homogeneous data structures the elements may or may not be of same type the data structures that are atomic because they are directly operated by the machine instructions so called it is primitive the data structure that are not atomic they are derived from the primitive is known as non primitive data structure static data structure are one where the size of the structure and its associated memory location is fixed when the program is compiled in static memory allocation the memory is allocated at compiled time those data structure where size of structure and associated memory location is not fixed it may vary are called dynamic data structure in dynamic data structure memory is allocated at run time whenever it is necessary so in linear data structure the first is array the array is a collection of homogeneous data items in which is stored under the same name and at the contiguous memory location homogeneous data item means all the data elements of the same type next is linked list linked list is a dynamic data structure because in this memory alloc is allocated at run time uh, is the sense that we do not require the size of the linked list in advance each node has two part first is the info part that contains the data and second is the next pointer that will contain the address of the next node next is stack stack is also known as the lifo list means last in first out in lifo list the items are inserted or deleted at one end that is known as top this means the elements are inserted as well as removed from the top of the stack there are two basic operation of the stack first is push push means insert the element into the stack and second is pop that means to delete an element from the stack next is queue it is also a linear data structure q is also called the fifo list fifo list means first in first out since the first element is that means the first element that is inserted into the queue is the first element that is deleted from the queue there are two basic operation of the queue data structure n queue and d queue n queue means to insert element in the queue and d queue means to delete an element from the q now the tree tree is a non linear data structure consist of distinguished node r distinguished node r that is known as the root and connected to zero or more subtrees that is connected to r with the direct edge that is a tree a graph so we generally know the graph is represented by the two tuple v and e we will call the set of vertices and e will call the set of edges so set of vertices and set of edges together is specify the graph it is also a non linear data structure now there are some basic operations that are performed on the data structure like inserting insert a node into the list deletion deleting the existing data item from the list traversing traversing means to access the data item exactly once searching to search a particular data item in the list sorting to arrange the data item in some logical order like ascending or descending merging merge to 
data list, concatenation, copy are the some basic major operation that are applied on the data structure. Next is the algorithm. Algorithm is a sequence of steps to solve a particular problem. It is used to develop a logic for a program without considering the syntax of the programming language. When we apply the data structure on the algorithm, then it becomes a program. then it become a program. So, the properties of algorithm include input, input means algorithm has 0 or more input, the algorithm has 1 or more output, the all the step are algorithm, all the steps in the algorithm are precisely defined finiteness all the algorithm has finite number of steps. So, they can it can terminate after the finite number of steps. The algorithm should be complete and algorithm is to be feasible. Now, generally the question is asked from the linked list. Most of the question in the companies are uh, asked from the linked list. The first question is what is the linked list? So, linked list is a dynamic data structure uh, that can be used to implement other data structure like a stack, queue, tree, graph. Linked list is a sequential data structure. It is a list of nodes where each node have at least two part. First is the information part and second is the link part. In information part, the data is stored all the node contains similar type of information and in link part the next node address of the next node is stored like this. If there is no another node then node part will contain the null value. Linked list is a dynamic data structure that means the memory is allocated at run time. The programmer does not know the size of the memory in advance. Here the memory is allocated at run time, memory need not be contiguous. We can allocate memory whenever we get a free, when wherever we get the free node. So, this is all about the basic of the linked list. Now, what are the advantages of the linked list? Why we use the linked list? The first option is linked lists are dynamic data structure because memory is allocated at run time. They can grow or shrink during the execution of program. If memory is needed, using malloc function you can allocate the memory for memory malloc function you can allocate the memory. If memory is not needed, you can release the memory using free function, but it is not easy in array. It allow a new element is to be inserted at or deleted from any position. In array it is not feasible, in array we want to shift Suppose, we have to insert the first position, then we have to shift all the array elements to the back. If you have to insert the last, then we have to shift all the elements to the back. Adding or removing an element is cheaper as compared to array because no movement of data is required. In array, the movement is necessary. Adding or removing an element is of complexity 0, 1 which is minimum for any operation. So, the best advantage, the big advantage of linked list is, it is used to represent the polynomials, polynomial equations like x square plus 3x plus 5. It is used to store or create the polynomial equation using linked list. Linked list is useful for application that use a data structure of unpredictable size. 
जिसका साइज बिल्कुल भी एडवांस में आपको नहीं पता है तो उसके लिए आप बेहतर है कि आप लिंक लिस्ट यूज करो नेक्स्ट इज कॉन्कटनेशन ऑफ टू लिस्ट कैन बी डन इजीली यूजिंग द लिंक लिस्ट एज कंपेयर टू एरेस इट कैन बी यूज टू रिप्रेजेंट द स्पास मैट्रिक्स इन स्पास मैट्रिक्स द इट हैज द लेस नंबर ऑफ एजेस सो इट कंटेन लेस number of non zero entries so uh, for saving a uh, space that uh, sparse uh, link list is used to save the space in link list representation memory is not pre allocated memory is allocated whenever it is required and it is de allocated when uh, when it is not needed so its implementation is efficient for memory utilization so many complex uh, applications can be easily carried out with the link list now what are the disadvantage of the link list first is it allows sequential access only because each node will contain the address of the next node yadi aapko randomly koi node select karna hai to uske liye aapko linear searching karni padegi so for any arbitrary data item it is little but cumbersome to also a time consuming because of the sequential access and it is required extra storage for the space because a single node will contain two part first is the info second is the pointer so because of pointer more space is required so this is the big disadvantage of the link list so that is the wastage of the more memory required so the generally the question ask to perform the basic operations on the link list like to insert a node at the beginning in the list to insert the node at the last in the uh, uh, link list to insert the node at a particular position in the link list deletion from the beginning deletion from the ending deletion of a particular node and the reverse of the link list and these operations can be asked in any of the link list there are four types of link list singly link list circular doubly link list and circular doubly link list in circular uh, singly link list the node are arranged in the sequential manner first node next part will contain the address of the next node they it can do only the forward direction traversing we cannot look at the predecessor node in circular link list there is no null the last node next part will contain the address of the first node in this the traversing is always in the forward direction in doubly linked list the node will contain the three part first part will contain the address of the previous node and next part will contain the address of the next node in this traversing is bi directional forward direction in backward direction in circular double link list it has the property of double link list and circular link list that means the first node last node will contain the address of the first node and first previous pointer will contain the address of the last node like this this is the circular link list so there are jo humne jitne bhi operations padhe to inse related question kisi bhi link list pe perform karne ke liye pucha ja sakta hai ki insert the uh, node in the beginning in the doubly link list or in the circular link list or in the single link list let us take an example then Uh, first is how to reverse the single link list 
how to reverse a single link list means the input is The address of this node is 100. So, head pointer will contain the address 100 and this node will contain the address of the next node. The next node is 200. So, this will contain the 200, this will contain 300 and this will contain 400. After that, there is no further node. So, next part will contain the null pointer or now we want to reverse the linked list. That means, it reverse not reverse the link list, it just reverse print the numbers in the uh, reverse order. Just link reverse. The head pointer will contain the address 400, 400 will contain the address 300, 300 contain the 200, 200 will contain the address 100 and 100 is the last node that the next pointer will contain the null. That means, it just reverse the, just reverse the link of the linked list. So, in this example, First, we initialize the three pointers current pointer that is current pointer. We uh, specify the current pointer like C. C will contain the address 100. Now, two pointers previous and next. The previous pointer contain the null and next pointer will contain the null. While the current pointer is not equals to null, jab tak hamara current pointer null nahi ho jayega, the next, the current ka next jo hoga, wo next pointer mein save hoga. To current ka next kya hai? 200. So, 200 is save in the next pointer. And current ka jo previous hai, previous mein bhi kya hai humare null. So, previous null is stored in current ka next. So, current ka next kya hai? 200. So, yahaan pe kya aagya humara null. and then current become previous, current become previous and next become current and back to the while loop. Now, current is not equals to null, the current is null equals to null, the current is 200. So, the current ka next will become next. The current ka next, current ka next kya hai aapka? 300, 300 is the next and then current ka next mein humne previous ki value dal. Now, previous will contain 100, to 300 ki jaga kya gaya? Ab 100. So, aap dekhe yaha pe linking kya hoge? Reverse. So, node number 2 ke paas ab address kis ka hai? Just previous wale node ka address. Now, current become the previous and next become the current. Now, back to the loop, the current is not equals to null, yes current is 300, then current ka next is next, current ka next care 400, that is next. Now, current ka previous, current ke next mein humne previous ki value, yani ki current ke next mein, ye kya hai 400 mein kya dal di aapne? 200, yani ki linking kya ho gai? just reverse node 3 pointing to node 2 and then previous become current, current become previous and next become current. Now, back to the loop, current is not equals to null, yes current not equals to null, current is 400. Now, the current ka next, current ke next me kya hai? Null. 
तो नेक्स्ट में भी क्या आ गया आपका नल नेक्स्ट इज नल नाउ करंट के नेक्स्ट में हमने प्रीवियस कर प्रीवियस में क्या है थ्री हंड्रेड तो यहाँ पे क्या आ गया करंट के नेक्स्ट में थ्री हंड्रेड देखिए यहाँ पे लिंकिंग आपकी रिवर्स हो गई नोट फोर के पास एड्रेस किसका है नोट थ्री का एड्रेस है नाउ करंट बिकम प्रीवियस एंड नेक्स्ट बिकम करंट तो नेक्स्ट इज नल तो करंट इज ऑल्सो नल नाउ बैक टू दी नोट नाउ करंट इज नल द कंडीशन इज फॉल्स नाउ गो थ्रू द लूप जस्ट गो आउट फ्रॉम द लूप एंड द प्रीवियस इज अड अब हेड पॉइंटर के पास किसका एड्रेस होगा हेड पॉइंटर के पास एड्रेस होगा P और P का एड्रेस क्या है 400. हंड्रेड सो दैट इज द रिवर्स ऑफ द सिंगली लिंक लिस्ट यूजिंग थ्री पॉइंटर करंट पॉइंटर प्रीवियस पॉइंटर एंड द नेक्स्ट पॉइंटर तो जनरली इस टाइप के क्वेश्चन इंटरव्यूज में पूछे जाते हैं कि हाउ टू रिवर्स अ लिंक लिस्ट नेक्स्ट हाउ टू फाइंड द मिडल एलिमेंट ऑफ द लिंक लिस्ट सो देर आर टू प्रोसीजर टू फाइंड आउट द मिडल एलिमेंट ऑफ द लिंक लिस्ट फर्स्ट इज जस्ट काउंट द नंबर ऑफ नोट इन द लिंक लिस्ट एंड जस्ट हाफ एंड रिटर्न द हाफ काउंट बाई टू विथ एलिमेंट बट द कंडीशन इज दैट to find out the middle element in the single pass in the single pass means in a single traversing you don't know the number of nodes in the link list in that case how to find the middle element of the link list in that case we use the two pointer first slow pointer and second is the fast pointer first pointer go man the fast pointer go to the two addresses and slow pointer goes to the first link that means if second pointer hamara ek do bhadega to first uh, slow pointer hamara ek bhadega yani ki jab hamara slow pointer middle element pe hoga to fast pointer hamara last element pe hoga two pointer one is one uh, move the one pointer by one and other pointer by two just double chal जिसको बोलते हैं हम जस्ट डबल चलेगा वेन द फास्ट पॉइंटर रीच इज द एंड द स्लो पॉइंटर विल रीच द मिडल ऑफ द लिंक लिस्ट जस्ट टेक एन एग्जाम्पल सी टेक अ लिंक लिस्ट to find out the middle element of the link list so there are two pointers slow pointer and fast pointer both will contain the head address head address is 100 so in slow pointer the address is 100 and in fast pointer head address is 100 now head is not equals to null if head is not equals to null so head is not equals to null head is 100 so while file po uh, fast pointer is not equals to null jab tak hamara fast pointer yani ki last node and nahi ho jata एंड या फिर उसका नेक्स्ट नल नहीं हो जाता तब तक फास्ट पॉइंटर के नेक्स्ट का नेक्स्ट एज अ फास्ट पॉइंटर फास्ट पॉइंटर क्या आप ही आपका हंड्रेड हंड्रेड के नेक्स्ट का नेक्स्ट हंड्रेड का नेक्स्ट क्या है हंड्रेड का नेक्स्ट है आपका टू हंड्रेड is the 500 this node will contain the address 200 this is contain 300 this contain 400 this contain 500 and the head pointer will contain 
the address of the slow pointer is 100 the address of the fast pointer is 100 the fast pointer is not equals to null yes fast pointer is not equals to null it is 100 then fast pointers next is next the fast pointer next fast pointers next is 200 200 ka next is 300 now the fast will point to node 3 and the slow pointer 100 ka next 100 ka next is 200 is the slow pointer yani ki it will is it is the slow pointer now back to the loop the fast pointer is not equals to null yes the fast pointer is not equals to null the fast pointer is 300 now the fast pointer next to next the fast pointer is 300 300 ka next 400 400 ka next 500 uh, 500 now the fast pointer will point to the fifth node and the slow pointer next is slow pointer slow pointer ka next is 300 then it is the slow pointer now back to the loop in that case the fast pointer is not equals to null yes fast pointer is not equals to null and fast pointer next but the fast pointer next is null the condition is false the condition is false then come out from the loop and print the slow pointer data the slow pointer point to the 300 and 300 data is 3 so answer is 3 the middle element of the linked list is the 3 so generally this type of questions generally asked in the interviews the, there are some theory question is also asked in the interviews like how do you reference all the elements in the one dimensional array to reference all the elements in the one dimensional array you need to use the indexed loop so that the counter runs from 0 to array size that is the minus 1 and in this manner you can reference all the elements in the sequence by using the loop counter as the array subscript uh, what are the field where the data structure is used where the data is involved where the data is involved their data structure is used like in compiler designing like in database management system like in operating system in numerical analysis and in statical analysis there are a lot of applications of data structure next what are the binary tree binary tree has 0 or 1 or 2 child ya to 0 ya 1 ya 2 child so a binary tree is one type of data structure that has two nodes a left node and the right node in programming binary trees are extension of the linked list now the which data structure are applied when the dealing with the recursive function very important when we are talking about the recursion always stack is used that means a leafo list last and first out recursion is a function that call itself based on the terminating condition make use of a stack using leafo a, a call to a recursive function saves the return addresses so that it knows how to return to the calling function jab bhi hum ek function call karenge wo sare hamare stack mein save hote jayenge so, for, for recursion, always a stack data structure is used. Next, explain the binary search tree. Actually, there is a very uh, the disadvantage of the binary tree is suppose suppose we want to search an element 9 you don't know the where the 9 is stored in the left subtree or in the right subtree 
so it is a very time consuming task to search the element 9 it goes to all the levers to search the element 9 but in binary search tree binary search tree is store the data in such a way that can be retrieved very efficiently like the left subtree contain the nodes whose key value are less than the node key value left side mein hamesha wo data is store hoga jo root node se chota hoga aur right node mein right subtree mein wo data is store hoga jo hamesha root node se bada hoga like this Suppose we want to search an element 9, so in that case we know the 9 is greater than 5, so it is searched in the right subtree. That is the advantage of the binary search tree. Now what is the difference between null and the void? So null is a value and void is a data type. A variable that is given to a null that indicates the empty value and the void is used to identify the pointer as having no initial size. Using type casting, we convert the void pointer to the uh, any data type. What is the advantage of heap over the stack? It is a very important co uh, question what are the advantages of the heap over the stack the heap is more flexible than the x uh, stack because memory space for the heap can be dynamically allocated and deallocated as needed the memory of the heap can at times be slower when as compared to the stack while stack memory allocation is very fast and guaranteed to be immediately available if the function invoked successfully. That is the difference between heap over the stack. Next is what is the postfix expression? Post is uh, postfix expression means the operand is followed a operator like a b plus. The postfix expression is an expression in which each operator, each operator follows his operands. The advantage of this form is that if there is no need to group the sub expression in the parenthesis or to consider the operator precedence. Next, what is the minimum number of nodes that a binary tree can have? the minimum number of nodes in a binary tree is 0. After that, it will contain the 1 or 2 nodes. So, minimum node is 0, which occur when the nodes have null value. Furthermore, a binary tree can have 1 or more nodes, 1 or 2 nodes, not more. What is the minimum number of queues needed when implementing the priority queue? In prior to implement the priority queue, there are two queues are needed. First is for store sorting the priorities, storing the priorities, and second for the data storage. So two queues are used. Next, what is an ABL tree? ABL tree is also known as height balance tree. It is a self balancing tree. The disadvantage of binary search tree because as we know in a binary search tree the data is always stored according to the node value. If the node uh, if the value is less than the root then it is stored in the left subtree. If the value is greater than the root and it is stored in the right subtree. Suppose we want to store A, B, C, D. In that case, the all values are stored in the right subtree, like this. So, 
So, the complexity of this is order of then or generally the complexity is height of the tree, but in right is skewed case or left is skewed case the complexity is order of n n is the number of nodes in the tree. So, to overcome this problem we introduce the avial tree that is the height balance tree using rotations. So, avial tree is a type of binary search tree that is always in a state of particularly balanced. The balance is measured as a difference between the height height of left subtree minus height of right subtree is always greater than equals to 1. That means, ya to 0, ya fir 1, ya fir minus 1. If the values of this is 0, 1 or minus 1, that means tree is balanced, otherwise tree is not balanced. So, this is the self balancing tree to be the first data structure to be designed. Next is what is the Hoffman algorithm? Hoffman algorithm, yeah, Hoffman algorithm is a coding technique for encoding the data and this encoded data is used in compression techniques. So, Hoffman algorithm is used to compress the data. So, Hoffman algorithm is used to creating the extended binary tree that have minimum weight path lengths from the given weight. It makes use of a table that contains the frequency of the occurrences for each data element. Next is what explain the recursive algorithm. So, in recursive algorithm, we divide the problem into small problems, sub problems. The output of one recursion after the processing one sub, uh, one sub problem that is the input of the next recursive process. What is the Fibonacci search? It is a comparison technique. For comparison technique, for comparison we use the Fibonacci numbers. So, Fibonacci search is a search algorithm that applies to the sorted arrays. It makes use of divide and conquer approach that can significantly reduce the time needed in order to reach the target element. Evaluate the following prefix expression this. To evaluate the prefix and postfix uh, expression, we always use the stack. In prefix, we always scan from the right. If there is an operand, push it onto the stack and if there is an operator, pop two operand from the stack and perform the operation and push result back to the stack. So, it is a prefix. So, in, in this, we start from the right side, push the symbol onto the stack. First symbol is 4, push 24, next symbol is 3, next symbol is 1. Now, the operator, whenever there is an operator, pop 2 operand from the stack. So, pop 2 operand, you can remove 1 and 3 and perform the operation, operation is minus the answer is minus 2 and push the result back to the stack. Now, the in stack push minus 2. Next, next operator is plus. Now, push operate uh, uh, 2 operand from the top of the stack. So, first is the minus 2 pop and next is 24. Perform the plus operation that is 22. Now, push the result back to the stack and give push 22 to the stack. Now, start scanning. Next symbol is 6, push it on to the stack, 2, push it on to the stack. Now, the plus. Again, there is an operator, then pop 2 operands. Operands is 6 and 2. So, first pop 2, then pop 6 and perform the plus operation that is 8 and push the result 8 to the stack. 
now the last is plus. So, pop 2 operands, so first is 8, second is 22, perform plus operation that is 30, then push the 30 into the stack. So, the final answer is 30 like this. In postfix, we start scanning from the left side. In prefix, we start scanning from the right side. In postfix, we start scanning from the left side. This procedure is same. Operand, push it onto the stack. Operator, pop two operands and perform the operation. Like this. First symbol 5, 6, 2. Now the plus, pop 2, 2 plus 6 is 8, push it 8. Now star, push, pop 2 operand that is 8 into 5 that is 40, then push 40 onto the stack. Next is 12 and next is 4, push it onto the stack. Now divide, then divide, then pop 2 operands, 12 divided by 4 that is 3, push 3 onto the stack. So, there are 2 operands 40 and 3. Now, minus is coming then 40 minus 3 that is 37. Now, push 37 back to the stack that is the final answer. So, final answer is 37. Next is in which data structure elements can be added or removed at the uh, either end. There is only one data structure in which we can insert and delete an item from both the end that is double ended queue. We in double ended queue we can insert and uh, delete the data from both the ends front end and rear end. Explain on the predefined dynamic memory allocation functions. There are four predefined dynamic uh, for, for dynamic memory allocation function malloc, calloc, realloc and free. Malloc function is used to allocate the memory. The syntax is this. Malloc function return a void pointer and the default value of a variable is garbage. So, typecast is a data type that is used to convert the return pointer into the data type that is needed. So, typecast is a data type that is your return pointer and return pointer is type ka, void type. Ka. Just go convert karega data type as you need. If you want integer, then convert it into integer. If you want character, then convert it into character. Pointer is a, a pointer variable is a pointer that holds the address of the starting memory block. Pointer a pointer hai that will hold the address of the starting memory block. Malloc is used to allocate the size and size is always given in the bytes. So, it allocates the contiguous memory in the RAM. Suppose we give the 20, so it allocate 20 bytes in the RAM in a single block. Calloc is also used to allocate the memory the syntax is it is also return a void pointer, but the default value of a variable is 0. The difference between calloc and malloc is in malloc we pass a one argument that is the size of the allocated memory block. 
and in Kellogg we uh, pass the two argument first is the how many blocks and second is the size of the each block like 10 comma 2. So, it allocates the 20 bytes that means 10 block of 2 2 bytes and typecast is also a data type that is used to convert the return pointer and pointer is a pointer variable that holds the address of the starting node. Realloc, realloc is used to resize the pointer variable like this. So, realloc is used to resize the pointer variable with new size and free pointer, free uh, function is used to release the memory if it is not no longer needed. Syntax is free pointer variable that will contain the address of the first starting address of the memory block. So, free pointer release the memory of the pointer variable. So, these are the four predefined functions for the dynamic memory locations. Explain the approaches to develop the algorithm. There are mainly three approaches to develop the algorithm. First is the greedy approach. It is used to finding the solution by choosing the next best option. In divide and conquer, we, pro we divide the problem into minimum possible sub problems and solving them independently. But in dynamic programming, we also make a choice dividing the problem to a minimum possible sum problems and solving them combinedly. So, there are three approaches for designing the algorithm. Next is how to find the number of possible binary trees with n node most important question how to find the number of possible binary tree with n node the formula is 2 n c n divided by n plus 1 if the number of nodes is 3 then the binary tree is 5 5 this is a binary tree this is the binary tree this is the binary tree with three nodes. This is the binary tree, this is the binary tree. So, there are four possible binary trees with node tree, 3. What is the difference between full binary tree and complete binary tree? <coughs> the full binary tree is a tree in which every node other than the leaves has two children, has 0 or 2 children. A complete binary tree is a binary tree in which every level except possibly the last is completely filled and all the nodes are far as left possible. In full binary tree only 0 or 2 child are allowed like this. This is a full binary tree. But in complete binary tree, it is also a complete binary tree, but whenever fill the child, it is always filled by left to right like this. It is a complete binary tree, but not full binary tree. Now, the following numbers are in, uh, inserted into the empty binary search tree. What is the height of the BST? As we know in binary search tree, the value is a small to the root, then store into the left subtree. If value is greater than uh, the root, then store in the right subtree. This first node is 10, now is 10. Next is 1, 1 is a small to the 10, then store in the left subtree. 3, 3 is less than here or greater than 1 then goes to the right subtree. 5, 5 is less than 10 here, 1, 5 is greater than 1 right and greater than 3, here is 5, 15 is greater than 10, 
12 is greater than 10, but less than 15 and 16 is greater than 10 and greater than 16, though goes to the right subtree. Then what is the height of the BST? Height of the BST is the maximum level plus 1. So, level is 0, 1, 2, 3. So, height is 3 plus 1 equals to 4. The height of the BST is 4. Next is the data is structure required for the breadth first traversal and depth first traversal. For BFS, we always use the Q data structure and for DFS, we use always a tree uh, stack data structure. We already discussed in the graph traversal techniques. What is the recursive solution to solve the Tower of Hanoi problem? In Tower of Hanoi problem, there are three towers and suppose there are three disks and we want to shift the disk from A to C using B. The rule is at a time one disk is moved and a small larger disk is always at the bottom and a smallest disk is always on the top. The answer is like this. So, how to solve this problem? Recursive solution. The recursive solution is this. In that case, there are n number of disks. We want to shift the disk that is the beginning tower that is A from to the ended tower using auxiliary, auxiliary storage. Yani using B, we want to shift it into C. So, in that case, first we uh, shift the n minus 1 disk. See, n minus 1 disk. That means, suppose this is your beginning, this is your aux, and this is your n tower. And we want to shift these disk into the n tower. So, first we take n minus 1 disk, n minus 1 disk that is 2 disk, shift it into aux using and as a auxiliary because first we shift first disk into the and tower and second disk to the aux tower and then shift the and disk to the aux. So, this we have done that the n minus 1 disk we have done aux mein transfer ki using and. So, first n minus 1 disk beginning se aux me using and. Ab jo last me aapki ek disk rahe gaye. Usko direct kaha shift kar denge aap and me. To jo ek disk rahe gaye, wo direct beginning se kaha chali jayegi and me. That is also known as beginning to and. Next is ab aapki jo n minus 1 disk. ये जो आपकी n minus 1 disk aux में है, इनको कहाँ shift करना है? and में। लेकिन सबसे पहले जो small disk है, उसको आप कहाँ shift करेंगे? beginning में, then middle को and में, then beginning से and में। यानी कि जो n minus 1 disk हैं, उनको आप auxiliary से and में लेके जाओगे using beginning as a auxiliary memory. Now what is the tail recursion? Tail recursion is a kind of recursion in which there is no pending operation. There is no pending operation after returning from the recursive function. In simple uh, recursion, the pending operation are ne uh, is used. This is a special kind of approach which helps in improving the space and time efficiency of the algorithm. Just take an example. This is an example of calculating the factorial of the number. So, so, first is the fact and suppose we want to calculate the factorial of 5 that will return the function fact 1 and n is 5 and i, i is the initially started from 1. 
i is 1. Now, call the function fact 1, first argument is the n, second argument is the result. If n equals to 1, yes, no, x n equals to 5, then else part and return fact 1, return fact 1 that we contain 3 n minus 1, n minus 1 is 4 into comma n into result, n is 5, result is 1. 5 into 1 is 5. The again the function is called fact 1, go to the function, n equals to 1, no, n is far, then else part, again call fact 1, that is 4 n minus 1, 4 minus 1, 3, and n into result, 4 into 5, that is 20. Now, again the function fact 1 is called n equals to 1, no n equals to 1 nahi hai, then again call function fact 1 that will contain n minus 1 that is 2 comma 3 into 20 is 60. Now, again call fact 1 integer n, n is 2 not n equals to 1 then again return fact 1 and result is 120. Now, again call fact 1, here the value of n is 1, the value of n is 1. Now, the return is result, the result is 120. So, there is no pending operation and the answer is 120, that is a tail recursor. So, now the question is the what is the basic condition to for overflow, over means overflow means full or in the circular skew. The circular skew is full when the front is 0 and rear is max size minus 1. So, from that equation rear plus 1 equals to max size and rear plus 1 we divided by max size equals to 1 convert it into mod function. So, rear plus 1 mod max size equals to 0, we can draw it also is uh, like this and here 0 is front. So, rear plus 1 mod max size equals to front. So, this is the basic overflow condition of the circular cube. So, this is uh, there are some basic questions regarding the data structure that are commonly asked in the interviews. So, now thank you so much for so, regarding the in this session you can ask me at this email id. So, thank you so much.